All right, and some welcome weather on the way, Katie. Indeed, we are tracking a cold front that's going to be bringing us that refreshing change. Here is the front as we track it moving into eastern Kansas and northern Missouri right now, and we'll come in and take a very close look at these thunderstorms in just a moment. But I wanted to show you what's coming in behind this front. The temperature has been dropping 10 to almost 20 degrees, and that's the type of air we're going to get to enjoy once this front continues its work through Kansas City. But right now, while we're out ahead of the front, it is still mild and muggy. 73 currently in Kansas City, 68 in Marshall, still 70 in Trenton. Expect to see that coming down. 73 in Lawrence this morning and 74 in Belton. Now let's get in and take a closer look at these rain showers. Notice that there's not a lot of rain for everybody. These are more scattered in nature and the heaviest rain while well, we've got one pocket that is coming into Buchanan County. It looks like three areas of rain kind of merging there, one coming south out of Savannah, the other one east from uh, the Missouri River, and the other one that is already over I-29, kind of all centered there in Buchanan County right now. Those are moving east at 20 miles per hour, and then you can't help but have your eye drawn to this more heavy shower thunderstorm complex that is in central Missouri. Let me turn off the lightning for a moment and show you what this looks like as we peer into this storm. You can see there is a core here of very heavy rain. There could even be some pea-sized hail in this area that is moving down towards Utica. It might clip the west side of Chillicothe or and if it continues any eastward progression, that core may actually come right through the city of Chillicothe, but it's not severe. It's not one inch in diameter, but it is something that will make catch your attention early this morning. I have put a storm track on this entire storm that stretches from south of Gallatin to uh, just east of Trenton, not yet to Kirksville. This is moving at about 25 to 27 miles per hour. So this puts it in Meadville at 532, Mount, uh, Blue Mound at 544, and Laclede at 5 544 also. That line may continue to fill in or at least patchy thunderstorms may form. So we'll keep that in our forecast even for Kansas City this morning. Our cold front will be passing by and this afternoon our winds will turn to the north and blow at about 10 miles per hour. Not terribly strong. We're getting pretty close to the center of the high pressure and that tends to calm the winds down a bit. Today's forecast, the morning chance of rain is not 100%. For, that means not everybody's going to see the rain. It's more spotty in nature. 82 will be our high. Everybody will see the drop in the temperature, though, once that front moves through. Tomorrow, we may warm up a couple of degrees. Our winds will turn to the southwesterly direction, but it will still be a beautiful day with lower humidity. Another cold front comes through on Monday, and that will kind of just solidify low 80s for the rest of the work week. Up to 85, though, by Friday and next weekend. We're going to warm up again. 86 on Saturday, 89 degrees on Sunday. Kelly and I will be right back.
First news time 525 this morning. You're taking a live look at downtown Kansas City. Well, it's been almost a week since the president signed four executive orders, and you may be wondering what now? Our chief national consumer correspondent has the answers in his latest Rawson response. Hi, yeah, big week of developments. Every single day the story seems to change. Today is no different. We have new information just coming in about the stimulus negotiations, and you want to know what's happening with these executive orders. Are you getting your money or not? Let's get right to the information here to break it down for us. Pete Dunn, host of the Pete the Planner Show and CEO of Your Money Line and Hey Money. Hey, Pete. Hey, Jeff. Good to be back with you. This has been a wild week, so let's get started. Yeah, what's the latest? What's going on? Well, it, it, everything is happening in the West Wing. And nothing is happening in Congress. In fact, we have heard already this week that it will be weeks before another stimulus bill is reached as they are uh, the Democrats are wanting $3 trillion worth of funding. The Republicans only want to give $1 trillion worth of funding, and they're not really wanting to meet in the middle. So that's why the president has taken so much action. But what, does the president actually have the right to take that action? On Friday, he was tweeting out that uh, he wants to send $3,400 to every American. Can he do that without congressional approval? Well, Jeff, I got a B-plus in high school government. I think that's worth noting. Uh, but uh, Congress controls the purse. That's the way it is. It's in the Constitution. Congress controls the purse. I don't think he can do it, but stranger things have happened in the last year or so, haven't they? And so we were all just w sitting here waiting. Congress has gone home, right? Yeah, Congress is, is not in Washington, D.C. negotiating right now. Uh, they've walked away. Uh, there, were, there were some phone calls this week, but the only relief ha has legitimately come via these executive orders, and even some of those executive orders have now come into question as to what they really mean. Right, because no money is being sent out the door right now, right? People shouldn't be checking their accounts right now for any money, unemployment or stimulus. Right, and the unemployment thing is interesting, right? Because there was $400 per week set aside in this executive order by President Trump, 300 to come from the federal government if, if the state the person lived in chipped in $100. Well, Jeff, as you know, states are struggling from a funding perspective, and many are saying they can't do it. Uh, here's the worst part. Uh, this won't happen for five to six weeks at the earliest, and at that point in time, that program will have run out of money, so people will get one lump sum check for the previous five to six weeks, and then it's over. What about uh, the eviction moratorium? I know the president signed the executive order. Discuss those protections, but apparently when you read the actual text, it doesn't stop evictions. What's the deal? I, I don't want this to feel like criticism per se. It is actually, now that we've seen the text of the executive order, we know that it doesn't actually stop uh, evictions. It just says, hey, we're going to take a look, which, which is great. But Jeff, people need action. Pete, thanks so much for being here today. For you at home, when I'm not on TV, I'm still keeping up with what's going on. It's changing minute by minute. You can stay updated, too. For more on what's going on with your money in this pandemic, sign up for my Rossum Reports newsletter. It is free. Come straight to your inbox with big developments and some insights. Sign up now at RossumReports.com. Back to you. Well, Clay County Health officials are recommending contact sports like football move to the spring. Let them play! Let them play! Let them play! Hear from parents who are confused about what's next for their children.
You're watching KNBC 9 News. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to KNBC 9 News Weekend. So glad you can join us. Meteorologist Katie Horner is here. She has your first alert this morning. Good morning, Katie. Good morning. We are tracking a cold front working its way across northern Kansas and Missouri. Most of the rain, if not all of it, is on the Missouri side right now. I don't know that downtown Kansas City nor Johnson County, Wyandotte County will get much rain from this. We're going to need to see development back here to uh, the west in order for that to happen as this slides off to the east southeast. So some of us getting torrential rain, some of us won't get any rain as this passes through. Buchanan County still getting some showers and thunderstorms, spotty now throughout Platte and Clay County, but certainly the bulk of the rain is this that we've been tracking for you. Just now starting to taper off in Jamesport and Gallatin. Let me slide down and show you as I remove the lightning so you can see just the intensity of the rain. This is showing that between Breckenridge and Utica, south of Samsel, we're getting some torrential rain. That's what you're seeing here with this bright pink. We have another product that we use kind of behind the scenes, gives us an indication of where the heaviest rain or hail may be. And this is showing us that there is probably some pea sized hail in here. This wants to show it as larger, but we know that there is just some heavy rain contamination in this too. So this is definitely the strongest cell in the area, but right now it is below severe weather limits, but we'll monitor it and we'll obviously be keeping a close eye. It's moving east northeast. It's heading towards Blue Mound. It'll be there at 543. That's in about 12 minutes. Meadville, it'll be there at 538. Very heavy rain, perhaps some hail with this Kelly and lightning, obviously, when it comes through. All right. Thanks, Katie. Well, the MIAA suspending all fall sports for the year, saying the pandemic is to blame. Some of the universities affected are Northwest Missouri State, Pittsburgh State, and the University of Central Missouri. UCM's Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics said in a statement, this is a tough day for Central Missouri Athletics and fans everywhere. We will always be committed to giving our student athletes the best opportunities moving forward. The 2020 Virtual Football Media Day is also canceled. The league will reevaluate the situation, we're told, in January. Well, for high school sports, parents in Clay County are upset after the health department recommended no contact sports in the fall. KMBC 9's Matt Fleener reports from Liberty. Contact sports here in Clay County are now in question after recommendations by county public health officials. Friday night lights in Clay County are in serious doubt after the Clay County Public Health Center's recommendation that contact sports like football move to spring. We believe that we know what's best for our kids. Jeremy Brick and his son Jay, along with dozens of other people, don't like the idea contact sports are in danger of getting canceled this fall. Let them play! Let them play! Many upset since county recommendations seem to apply to high school sports, leaving many youth sports parents and players confused on what's next. People are trying to close down football, and, and some of my friends don't want that. This virus is real. It's scary. But at the end of the day, we do have to do what's best for our child's whole well-being, not just one part of their well-being. Let these kids play. They need it. Stephanie Bujak brought her two sons to show health workers they want to play. There's a risk in everything you do in life, and it's worth it to us. Meanwhile, the county health department left it up to each school district to decide how to play moving forward. <laughs> Matt Fleener, KNBC 9 News. Now we reached out to Clay County health workers, but they declined an on-camera interview. We also wanted to hear from every school district in the county and are still waiting to hear back. Well, right now, high school football is banned in Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. The new order applies to all public and private schools, plus higher education and non-professional sports clubs and organizations. Now, besides high school football, volleyball, soccer, and marching band events are, have been affected as well. Detectives in Overland Park say their search for a missing mother is now turning cold. Local and federal police are helping look for 36 year old Mary Lane Carter. New video shows Carter was last seen at a gas station near West Memphis, Arkansas on August 2nd. She left Overland Park August 1st to visit family in Birmingham, Alabama. What makes this one really strange is how everything just stopped at a certain time time, you know, and we haven't had any sightings or heard from her since. 
Based on the gas mileage of her car, detectives are focusing their search in a West Memphis area where her cell phone was last detected. We have a scam alert this morning. This from Clay County. The sheriff's office says someone is calling people pretending to be a deputy. The scammer tells people they failed to appear for court or jury duty and says they'll be arrested if they don't pay up. The scammer uses real deputies names, badge numbers and even has a spoofed phone number. The sheriff's office has already intercepted more than $200,000 because people have called to report these scams. Turning to our Commitment 2020 coverage, the U.S. Postal Service removed hundreds of high volume mail processing machines across the country before the November election. Four have already been removed from facilities in Kansas City. The machines can do the work of up to 30 postal employees. The president of a postal workers union says it expects services to pick up in the fall because of mail in voting. Union leaders also say there will be less capacity to process mail and they're worried about potential delays for mail in ballots. Well, we are 11 weeks away from the general election. Aside from the presidential race, Missouri voters will have a say in the next governor. Kansans will vote in Senator Pat Roberts open seat in Kansas. The deadline to register to vote is October 13th. Missouri voters have until October 7th to register. Next week, the Democratic National Convention begins the week after the Republican National Convention. ABC News will have live coverage of both from Monday through Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m. right here on KNBC and online, including social media. Well, one person is dead after a car collided with a motorcycle at 19th and Sterling on Friday. Around 5, the motorcycle hit a pickup truck. A woman who was riding on that motorcycle later died at the hospital. The man driving has life-threatening injuries. The driver of the truck was not hurt, we're told. Attorneys for the Brain Buyer Man accused of killing two brothers from Wisconsin want the charges of abandoning a corpse dismissed. The brothers disappeared after visiting Garland Nelson's farm. Their burned remains were later found. Now, Nelson's attorney argued that charging him with murder and abandoning a corpse violates his right to remain silent. Prosecutors say Nelson could have anonymously reported where the brothers' bodies were located without incriminating himself. New this morning, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation says it received more than 200 reports of Catholic clergy sex abuse. The agency says it's gotten 205 reports and opened 120 cases since it started investigating the state's diocese back in November of 2018. The investigation involves dioceses in Wichita, Salina, Dodge City and Kansas City, Kansas, along with the Society of St. Pius. Survivors of commercial sexual exploitation came together Friday to support each other and remember those who have died. Dozens walked along Independence Avenue in Kansas City, bringing attention to the issue of prostitution and the women involved. One of the speakers, a human trafficking survivor, says the event was about showing people they're not invisible. And we do have a voice and we do have power and these streets didn't win. These streets took the life of women that nobody cried, nobody grieved of, but we did. We cried, we grieved, you know, and, and our lives are important. She adds the first step toward meaningful change is understanding and empathy. Well, more than 160,000 people waking up this morning without power in Iowa. This after damaging winds tore through the state on Monday. It brought winds up to 100 miles per hour, toppled trees and power lines, damaged buildings and ruined a third or more of Iowa's cornfields. Now, those at a senior living center in Marion are asking for help, saying they have literally been left in the dark. We're on our own. No power. Uh, no elevator, got to go up three flights of stairs or two, uh, nothing with a flashlight, no emergency lights, for exits, nothing. They are also dealing with no air conditioning, cold water and very little food. Some residents have been getting supplies and checking in on others. They say they've reached out to management, but the office is closed. So tough stories when it comes to weather like that, Katie. Yeah, you it, know. 
straight line winds don't get the same type of attention that tornadoes do, but they can cause more damage. That was a derecho. That was straight line winds up to 100 miles per hour. But because they didn't rotate, because it wasn't called a tornado, it doesn't get the same coverage. But you saw the damage. You see the people still a week later without power. And I love the fact that there are communities here in Kansas City ready to reach out and help uh, when asked. So it's just great that we, we understand what it's like here in the middle of the country to be in straight line winds. And right now we're dealing with some very strong thunderstorms. They're just not quite severe. They're not producing one inch diameter hail, but they are or damaging wind, but they are producing torrential rain. And it's this thunderstorm that is moving around Chillicothe right now that we're keeping a close eye on. Yes, there are scattered showers and thunderstorms popping up west of that storm, but this is certainly the strongest storm. And I have put a track on this. It's moving east southeast at about 25 miles per hour. Blue Mound, this is on your doorsteps. Cunningham as well. Hail, you're next in line. Bramer, it might cut between Bramer and Blue Mound. You can see the core there with the brighter pink. That's where you're going to get that little bit of hail in this storm as well. In Kansas City, our chance of rain quickly diminishes after 9 a.m. We'll have increasing sunshine this afternoon, a high of 82, a north wind today after the front passes through at 10 miles an hour. All right, thanks, Katie. Well, a new KNBC 9 Chronicle documenting a little known piece of Kansas history. The Sunflower State is home to the first women woman mayor in America. Susanna Salter was just 27 when she was elected in 1887. She wasn't a politician, but the target of a prank by a group of men in town. Well, it turns out the joke was on them. Is early on, right after they had been granted the right to vote in city elections. So women are able to vote all of these temperance advocates see Susanna Salter's name, are probably a little surprised by it, but when they hear Susanna said, that's fine, okay, vote for me, they do so, and she wins in like, astounding numbers. You can hear the rest of the story on KNBC Chronicle, Pioneers, Patriots, Trailblazers. It airs Tuesday, August 18th at 7, right here on KNBC.
It's actually quiet here in the city. Clouds have gathered, but no rain yet here in the metro. There is some rain just east of Kansas City by Independence and over towards Blue Springs. You can see the rain right there. It continues up I-35 and I-29. Plenty of rain in northern Missouri, most of which is north of I-70 right now. Just not a lot heading into the metro. I do want to analyze this storm for you, though, that has moved through Chillicothe. It is now between Chillicothe and Bramer directly over Ludlow right now where you're seeing torrential rain, maybe even some hail. And if you are here and you're watching us this morning, I'd love to know for sure if you are getting hail. You can you can send me an email. You can let me know on social media because I'd love to know, get some ground proof of what is happening with that storm between Utica and Bramer. We are tracking that east southeast at 25 miles an hour. So this would be in hail at six o'clock, Bogart at 610, not far from Carrollton thereafter, which will continue tracking throughout the newscast. But our forecast for this weekend in Kansas City, we are going to have one shot of rain this morning. And then after about 9, 10 o'clock, that rain chance is over. We'll see decreasing cloudiness. We'll have a very nice afternoon, a high of 82. Look at the normal, which is 88. So this is nice. Not only is it going to be a little cooler than normal, but then the humidity will also be going down, which will make it very nice outside. And then on Sunday, 84 degrees. We warm up a little bit more on Sunday, but still a beautiful day with lower humidity, though we do have a southwest wind picking up Sunday afternoon at 10. We'll be right back. Well, the relationship between police and the people they serve has been strained in many places over the last few months.